right, welcome back to the Diamond Breakfast. I am now joined by Sydney Mwamba, the acting PMRC Executive Director, to talk about the 2023 national budget, which was presented by Minister of Finance and National Planning to the nation, to the National Assembly, excuse me, on Friday, 30th September 2022, under the theme, quote, stimulating economic growth for improved livelihoods. And we continue analyzing the 2023 national budget and focus on the projections for the next year. And we discuss more of this with Mr. Mwamba. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. So we'll get straight into the first question. Okay. Um, so we'll begin from Zambia's debt position. Uh, the IMF and other creditors have been convinced that Zambia is worth supporting and restructuring our debt is the conversation right now. So is the debt restructuring process taking too long to be concluded with? Well, um, not really, because um, we have two, two types of um, creditors we are dealing with here. Mm -hmm. So we've got bilateral and um, commercial lenders. And so um, the bilateral lenders, um, those are not very difficult to convince. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy to convince um, private creditors. So they need to buy in. They need to look, to look, to look at the country's uh, debt sustainability or the plan that we are, we are putting uh, across to them. The other aspect also is that some of the things that we are also demanding to them um, in line with the G20 framework, uh, such as haircuts, extension of um, repayment periods, and so on, these must be agreed upon, and each party must be satisfied. And so, um, you know, you can't just agree, he, agree there and then. You really need to take your time to understand that uh, this is a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. All right. So according to the finance minister, the government has laid a solid foundation to stimulate growth, uh, create jobs and improve the livelihoods of the Zambian people in the last year. What has been projected is now evident. Um, is our economy on the right trajectory? Exactly. Um, what we see now is that the economy is now on the right trajectory. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, it's normal that... Um, before you begin to build a, a strong home, mm -hmm. you need a strong foundation. Of course, yes. And so the foundation that we are talking about now are strong economic fundamentals such as um, stability in the exchange rate. Mm -hmm. You also have um, um, reduced inflation. And, of course, um, the, levels of, uh, the levels of employment. Unemployment. But currently you can see that the Government did respond by employing over 30,000 teachers and mm. over 11,000 health workers. That simply means that uh, more resources have been put into the economy and those have got triple down effect. Mm. But when we begin to see these economic fundamentals changing, then we begin to see that uh, a number of um, businesses can now be able to unlock some of uh, their resources mm to reinvest into the economy. Mm -hmm. And of course, this basically also just brings in the investor confidence. Uh, you'll be already with the IMF bailout that has been uh, uh, now uh, set and, uh, and that we are now in, in full swing. What this simply means is that uh, there is more investor confidence and we are likely to, to have more inflows in terms of uh, foreign direct investments. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, despite the restructuring of our debts, uh, the exchange rate of the Kwacha slowly stabilizing, inflation falling and government stepping up the expenditure on social services, it still seems like there are a limited amount, uh, amount of job opportunities at all levels. So has government addressed the unemployment problem? You did speak about the employment of um, three yeah, teachers. So, yeah. um, so the first things first, um, if you look at the 2022, bu the 2022 budget, mm -hmm. It did address the aspect of uh, job creation in line with uh, the theme. Mm -hmm. So you realize that um, government did deliver on the over 30,000 teachers mm -hmm. that have been employed. And um, a, a big proportion of that are, are actually on the payroll. Yeah. Similarly, in the health sector, that has basically happened. Mm -hmm. But then um, with these positive sentiments that I've mentioned, uh, issues such as... Um, the IMF uh, bailout package being in force, and of course, um, the laying of the strong macroeconomic fundamentals. Mm -hmm. These are basically now going to stimulate uh, more investments in the private sector. Mm -hmm. You can actually see that um, 
with the economy stabilizing, we have actually realized that the, a number of a number of in institutions or a number of companies in the mining sector, you could see that uh, First Quantum did um, unlock almost one point yeah one point four billion mm. um, worth of investment. So that has a, a ripple down effect from the private sector to create more jobs. But even some of the incentives that have been given to the private sector, they we wait for them to respond, and the response will be in terms of investments in in the productive sectors that will eventually lead into uh, employment creation. I see. Now on agriculture, uh, first continues in 2022-2023 farming season. But do you think that these comprehensive reforms under FISP are benefiting to the Zambian farmer? Well, um, I'll tell you that um, when you look at FISP. Mm -hmm. the, com the, the old way of doing things has not been successful to increasing the productivity of the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. And so um, the Comprehensive Agricultural Support Program sets a right tone because one, when you see uh, a shift in terms of increasing the resources that have been allocated uh, currently, you see that... Uh, Government now mm -hmm. will not just focus on the input on the input side. Yeah. So they will provide inputs to the farmer, mm -hmm. but at the same time provide extension services. So they they are robustly uh, investing in the extension services so that the productivity of our agriculture or that of the farmer should be improved. I think one thing that has been missing is. Uh, the extension services, services reaching, the, reaching all the parts of the country mm -hmm. and basically the farmers. So what this simply means is that uh, with more investments into ICT, uh, so there will be e-extension services and um, there will be more issues to do with uh, provision, of, uh, provision of finance, uh, issues to do with irrigation and so on. So that will basically mean that Farmers will be will be able to diversify their economy, their their economy in terms of diversifying their their crop enterprises, as well as even do other other value chain within their agricultural um, uh, uh, systems. Mm. Okay. Uh, now we're going to move on to mining. So under mining, it's clear that Zambia's copper production uh, has been stagnant due to unstable investment climate. From what has been disclosed from the 2023 national budget, what does the future for Zambia's mining sector hold? Oh, well, um, when you look at the mining sector, mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the most uh, things that has been uh, holding more investments by mm -hmm. the mining sector has been the, the, the unstable tax regime. Mm -hmm. But now we, we now see that... Um, there is now a progressive tax regime. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the measures that have been provided for by, by government in this budget, mm -hmm. um, medium to long term, mm -hmm. uh, so we say, are, are likely going to spur more investments in the mining sector. And that more investment simply means that uh, it is going to improve the productivity. Um, but, but the other aspect also is that these measures I like um, should also make sure that um, we the the country is able to to carry out more geological surveys so that we are able as a nation to be able to document um, all the areas that we have the different mineral resources uh, across the country and and of course that will lead into more opening up of new mines and so on. I see. Yeah. I see. Now, the government has withdrawn from the importation and supply of petroleum products. Uh, this will now be undertaken by the private sector. Are you confident that the private sector can deliver on this? Well, definitely the mm -hmm. private sector can deliver. Mm -hmm. um, you will know that the private sectors um, are driven by profit. They are, they are profit-based uh, driven. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, and then the other aspect is that when you leave things to run by the private sector, I think there's, there's a lot of efficiency, mm -hmm. okay? 
and of course when you look at it from the other side on mm. the on on the on the government side this simply means that the resources that government was spending okay we um we are saying that the burden on the treasury is going to be reduced mm -hmm. and those resources are the resources that are going to be reinvested back into social sectors uh, to provide social cash transfer keeping girls in school as well as um, uh, provide water and sanitation as well as look at issues of environmental protection because um, government mandate is, is, is quite huge and so what will be critical now is to ensure that government provide an oversight uh, to the private sector in terms of in terms of providing regulatory aspect to ensure that they are operating within the law. Mm -hmm. All right. And my final question, Mr. Mwamba, what are your thoughts on the revised upward threshold for pay as you earn from 4,500 kwacha to 4,800 kwacha? Well, um, moving the ban, mo moving the the threshold from 4,500 to to 4,800. This simply uh, translates into a significant in, in, into an increase of about 300 kwacha mm -hmm. into the, this, uh, into in form of disposable income so what this simply means is that uh, this is basically disposable income which government is adding to mm -hmm. those people that are into formal employment okay and this has got a ripple down effect because i think uh, little as it may look it will still have a cushion uh, to to different households, okay? Considering that um, we have been saying, I think previously we have been hit by several impacts like COVID-19 and so on. And now the, the economy is into the recovery mode, okay? And so to spur growth, you need certain incentives to, to ensure that resources are, are basically trickle down to... Uh, to the to the families um, and of course even for you you are working uh, and indirectly there's a, there's an increment of 300 to your salary and that simply means that you can spread your spending uh, within within this within the within that window mm -hmm. but of course um, that also takes you back also to the tax bans that 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 have been um, uh, created. You also realize there that uh, there will be more disposable income because I think the tax ban have been uh, actually adjusted. Mm -hmm. So you also realize that uh, there is more disposable income being taken to sort of uh, provide more social protection to the citizens of this country. I see. You. All right. Well, Mr. Mwamba, thank you very much for joining us this morning. That was Mr. Sidney Mwamba, the acting PMRC executive director, talking all things the 2023 national budget and some projections and what to expect and his thoughts on some of the key factors that were brought up during the national address. We'll be right back. You are tuned into the Diamond Breakfast. Stay tuned.